Hey book lovers, what's up? Today we are talking about a highly controversial issue amongst the book community, the reading order of the Throne of Glass series. So this is one of the top questions I get in my DMs on Instagram is what order do I read the Throne of Glass series? Which book do I read first? I'm so confused. Why are there different orders? What is going on? I get it. It's overwhelming. It is so complicated and it doesn't need to be complicated. So I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going to tell you the different options and how it changes things and what you should do. Pretty much the controversy starts because the publication order includes a prequel that is out of chronological order. Throne of Glass was published first and then Crown of Midnight was published. And then after that, she published a collection of five novellas called The Assassin's Blade. So this has five short stories in it about the main character, but they are set before book one. People started getting confused because of the timeline that this happens before these. And should I read this first before this? What should I do? The biggest controversy is where and when do I read the Assassin's Blade? So I'll tell you the different choices. Whenever I first learned about it, I was like, I want to read it the way she published it. I want to read it the way that she intended me as a reader to read it because of the order that she published it, which is Throne of Glass first, then Crown of Midnight, and then the Assassin's Blade. And the rest come in order that there is no controversy. And that's what I did. And I loved it. And I thought it was perfect. But after I posted that once of like, I'm a rule follower, I'm going to read the publication order. Somebody was like, okay, but she actually posted four out of five of the novellas of the Assassin's Blade online prior to publication of Throne of Glass. So they were like, eh, I don't know if your rule is true. And so then I was like, I need to know. All right. Like, I want to know. And I could not find it anywhere. The internet is like, maybe, I don't know, maybe. I could not find numbers. And I needed numbers, okay? I did all the digging. I couldn't find the information I was looking for. I messaged everyone that I could possibly message from Bloomsbury, from the publisher, every contact info that I could find because nobody ever replies. But months later, it has been months, I got a reply from an intern, BB intern, Bloomsbury intern, which was so funny. Thank you so much intern for answering my question. And they said, yes, Sarah J. Mass posted four of the Assassin's Blade novellas. Let me get my table of contents out. She posted the Assassin in the Pirate Lord, the Assassin in the Healer, the Assassin in the Desert, and the Assassin in the Underworld on the internet prior to publishing Throne of Glass. But after these two were published by the publisher, they said, Okay, let's take those novellas and then write one more novella and make it The Assassin's Blade. And they published it after Crown of Midnight. So it's it's a little debatable. Um, she posted some of them on the internet before she had been picked up by the publisher. But in true publication order from the publisher would be here after Crown of Midnight. Some people want to read The Assassin's Blade first before Throne of Glass because it is chronological. You read however you want to read and I do not care. If you, that brings you joy, you do it. My opinion, if I read this one first, I might be a little bored. I might be like, okay, who is this? What is going on? I don't know how to describe it. It's like, they're like little short stories about this character. And so you're like, why should I care about this character? Who is this? What is she doing? But because in this book, book number one, Throne of Glass, we learn about her and we get to know her. And in this book, we get to learn more about her. Then I'm like, okay, I want to hear her backstory. And I get her backstory and like where she came from, what she went through to get to be this girl. I loved reading it after Crown of Midnight. Also, another hesitation I have with reading The Assassin's Blade first, it has an emotional destruction at the end that if you are not prepared for it, I can just see it being soul wrenching. Okay, maybe you want that and you're fine with that. Personally, I loved being prepared for what was coming. Like I knew what was coming and I was still emotionally slaughtered. I knew what was coming and it was destruction. I just hesitate to recommend this one first because it's a little bit slow. And then what did you just do to me? I'm not reading those. You know, you might be like burned. Just something to think about. Another way people read it is after Air of Fire and they call this the romantic way of reading Throne of Glass. I have no idea. Honestly, I have no idea where that came from. Why? I don't know. Somebody just randomly said we should read it after Air of Fire. 
And that's like the main one going out right now. The main one that I see people reading is here. Whatever, that's fine. My biggest opinion is don't read this first. <laughs> I don't care if you read it after Crown of Midnight or after Air of Fire. I personally read it after Crown of Midnight and really enjoyed it that way. Crown of Midnight ends with like a little bit of a moment, but it's not like a, oh, I wanna get back to these characters so bad. I can't read this prequel. Then I've had comments from people who read it first and they're so passionate about it. Like, I loved it so much. How dare you tell anyone to read it a different way? So, you know, there's two sides of the coin. Another thing that I wanted to say about the books, there's so many POVs. It's amazing. I love it. I love all the POVs, but I remember at first being annoyed when she would switch to the witches POV. I was like, no, I'm not feeling as many feels for these people. Just you wait. Okay. Just hang in there. Hold on and keep reading their story because by the end, you will love them. You will love them. Another aspect of the controversy is the last three books. I'm gonna hop these down. Some lovely reader in the reader world created a guide for reading these two bad boys at the same time. And they call it Empire of Storms and Tower of Dawn Tandem Read, where they have chapter one of Empire of Storms, chapter one and two of Tower of Dawn, and then go back to chapter two of Empire of Storms all the way through the book. I did not do that. A couple of hesitations with that that I had personally was, look how long that is. That is so overwhelming to me. I'm like, I read one, I need a palate cleanser, you know? Let's see, this bad boy right here is 689 pages, okay? Plus 664. Y'all, I don't do math, but 1200 pages, that's a lot, okay, that's a lot. First, I hesitate because that seems overwhelming. Second of all, seems confusing. Third of all, she did not write it for me to read it like that. And as we already know, I'm a rule follower and I want to read it how she wrote it. The main reasons that people do that are because this one ends with a big old nasty cliffhanger, okay? And as soon as you end it, you're like, give me the next book, which you would think this is the next book that was published after this. But she throws you a curveball and she gives us the story of a side character in this. And so everyone's like, what's going on? I need to know what happened to the people at the end of this. And then you get this seemingly random side character story and people did not like that. And they were like, no, no, no. I don't want to read this when I just finished this. I want to know what happened to the people that I love at, in this one. So to that, I say like feels, okay, I get it. I was the same way, but I was terrified. Okay. I was terrified of what she was going to do to my people that I almost needed the like, moment of reprieve um to get to this one and here's my little side note to you little devils who skipped this you cannot skip this book like this book is so good i understand who are these people i've spilt i've spent so much blood sweat and tears forming relationships with people in characters in these books i don't need new characters but you do okay they are so good they are so good and what happens here matters a lot for what happens here i know it's confusing i refuse to give you spoilers but just trust me do not skip this so if you do the tandem or if you read it separate just don't skip it okay i loved this book i gave it five stars okay i'm gonna have to put my hair in a ponytail because who knew i would be so passionate about the reading order of a series i am sweating <laughs> This is one of the reasons that I love Sarah J Mass is because she elicits, her writing elicits so much emotion. Mm, I just have to, honey, I just have to love it. I have to love it. <laughs> Listen, I have never read a book where the author has made me so encapsulated with such a large number of characters. There are so many characters in the series. First of all, I'm shocked I can even keep track. Second of all, how is my heart on the line for every single one? I mean, you know, usually it's like I have one that I love and like, okay, if they die, whatever. No, 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 no. Like these are my babies, all of them, okay? <laughs> I'm getting passionate. I'm so sorry. So my formal recommendation for reading the Throne of Glass series is start with Throne of Glass and then Crown of Midnight. Next, the Assassin's Blade set of five novellas. Air of Fire, 
Queen of Shadows, Empire of Storms, Tower of Dawn, and Kingdom of Ash. Oh, I do not have strong feelings one way or the other about the tandem read. That seems like something that might be fun on a reread. I don't know, just the first time through, I wanted to read it um, the way that she published it. A couple of random notes to people considering reading this series. I have heard from several people like, okay, I tried this and I thought it was boring and I didn't really like it. I will say, I gave this one four stars. I still liked it. I was still interested in what was going on, but this is but a preview of what is coming, okay? <laughs> Sarah J. Mass wrote this. She started writing this when she was 15 years old. Like, that is insane. This is amazing for that. Book two, also, mm, I can't remember what I gave it, four or five stars. I still I liked it a lot, but still, but a glimpse of what was coming. This book, it's like a backstory, okay? It gives you the backstory, but don't skip it because it has breadcrumbs for what's coming. Very specifically placed breadcrumbs that give you information that you will be confused about down the line, the line if you don't read this. Air of Fire, starting to pick up, okay? It's starting to pick up. I'm getting very, very interested, and I'm like, all right, where is this bad boy going? Queen of Shadows, I'm done. I am totally 100% done. I'm all in by the time I get to this book. These books I still enjoyed, I really liked, but here I'm in love, okay. <laughs> loved, incredibly loved. Really super enjoyed, even though it threw me for a loop. 100%, 110% emotional destruction. <laughs> of the best variety. I love this series, I really did. I have a personal observation that whichever Sarah J Mass series you read first is your favorite. So I read Akatar first and I loved it so much. Like those characters are so special and I had never read anything like that. So I loved it. I read this last actually, I read Crescent City next and I really enjoyed it. And then I read this and it is so hard to compare them because they're so different. This one has more war and politics and then romance. Like the romance slowly builds throughout the series and Akatar is more romance focused. So they're just different, but just the incredible ability to make me feel so strongly for such a large number of characters. I was just dead, unwell, RIP me, like bury me now because it was so incredible. So. I say you read it. Read it. It's a completed series. Her website says that this is a completed series. Last year in an interview, she said, but is it really? And we all lost our minds. The internet screamed and died. We'll see what she does. I don't think she's going to add a book to this, but we'll see what she does. And I'm here for any of it. I do not care what she does. I'll read it. <laughs> That's some information about the Throne of Glass reading order. Either way, you can't go wrong. It's so good. And let me know your thoughts. Sound off in the comments of which way you read it and your opinion on the reading order. And then subscribe if you'd like to follow along and talk more books because we all know that books make life better. Thanks for watching.